First we go. Cut him up. Cut him up. Cut him up. There we go. Build him up. Build him up. Yeah. There we go. Break him down. Break him down. Break him down. There we go. Bring it up. Bring it up. Bring it up. Bring it up. Cut him up. Cut him up. Cut him up. There we go. Build him up. Build him up. Build him up. There we go. Break him down. Break him down. If you don't know me, I stay with them OGs. I S R A E L I T E T O C. Original God, so bright that you can't even see me. When I open my view, blind dead like I got a mouth full of gold teeth. We cut them up, then we let them know. Building them up to go wild and show. And then good, we ain't no more. We stomp this ass right through the flow. Twelve tries, I'm calling out. Yelling, repent with a big shot. Time to realize that you've been sodomized with all the lies. Cut them up, cut them up, cut them up. Here we go. class is entitled, The Bible is the Answer. The Bible is the Answer. Alright, because some of y'all was here last year. Um, all of y'all go to the streets each week, so we see the state of our people. Alright, and we go everywhere else to get solutions to our problems. So today, we're going to examine what should we use and why should we use it. And why we in the state that we in. So let's start with Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 2. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 2. You got a mic? Yeah, you got a mic. Hey, go right there. Yeah, you're going to read for all praise. The book of Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 2. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord hath spoken, I have nourished. And brought up children. Uh huh. He says, I have what? I have nourished and brought up children. He says, He hath nourished and brought up children. Nourished and brought up children. Who has the precept that proves that Israel is his child? Awesome. Um. Check, 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 check. Um, would you use Exodus 4 22? There you go. That's one of them. Let's go there. Exodus 4 22. That's correct. All right, because when we're reading these scriptures, we always want to go precept upon precept. So, who is this child that he raised up? Exodus 4 and 22. The book of Exodus, chapter 4 and verse 22. Uh huh. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Uh huh. Israel is my son. Israel is what? Israel is my son. Israel is his son. So that's the child that he's making reference to in Isaiah. Read. Even my firstborn. Even my firstborn. Go to Hosea 11 and 1. All right. To show you that Israel is his son, his firstborn. That's just the child that he's making reference to in Isaiah. The book of Hosea, chapter 11 and verse 1. Uh huh. When Israel was a child. When Israel was a what? Was a child. Uh huh. Then I loved him mm -hmm. and called my son out of Egypt. You see that? So that's also letting you know, where was the nation of Israel born? Brother in the back, uh, Yahaziel, soldier. Somebody pass on the mic. Shalom, soldier Yahaziel Orlando. Um, we became a nation in Egypt. Good, so we were born into what? We're born into a nation. Oh, we're born into a nation of people in Egypt, right? Well, we were born into what? What status? Oh, we're born into bondage. There you go. There you go. Our origin was captivity. Our origin was captivity. Why is that? Who knows why we were born into captivity? Why did we begin as a nation in slavery? Let me hear what uh, Brother Ray got to say. No, no. Right here. Right here. 
uh, Solomon, uh, Sogelia from uh, Orlando Camp. So the most I can show his power, destroy Egypt. Nope. All right, so the same for Mike. I know he going, you better get it right. Officer Kyle going to be mad. Um, when you read Genesis, the brothers of um, Isaac's sons, they uh, sold uh, Joseph to the, they gave him away to, to the Egyptians, and then he became um, like the king's right hand man. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the king of Egypt knew he accepted uh, Isaac and his sons. But then after he died, the new, the new Egyptian king did not know them. That's the that's the um, that's the carnal reason why we was in captivity. But I want the, the spiritual reason why. That's that's right. That's right. In a way, what you got, else? It was prophesied to happen to uh, Abraham that his seed was served in the land four hundred years. That's correct as well. That's correct as well. I want I want another reason. Because why would a nation be born into captivity? Why did we start off in captivity? Because why does the nation of Israel go into captivity? Because of what? Sin. sin. So what sin did we commit? Or our lineage commit? Uh, when you read Genesis chapter 6, um, we intermarried with the there other nations. There you go. That's what I was looking for. All right. We're going to read it. But I just wanted to get that for you. All right. So uh, go back to Isaiah 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 2. Uh -huh. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. Mm -hmm. For the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. Same thing we see today. Keep reading. The ox knoweth his owner, uh -huh. and the ass his master's crib. Read. But Israel doeth not know. Uh -huh. My people doeth not consider. Read. Ah, sinful nation. Hey, what? Sinful nation. That's who we going to teach today. A sinful nation. You're going to see every abomination you can find on the streets. A modest uh, hatred, covetousness, rebelliousness, all of that. Witchcraft. You're going to be brothers smoking weed. You're going to see the gambling. All of that stuff is going to be going on. The same thing that, I, that our forefathers went through. Read, read verse 4 again. Ah. Uh, Sinful nation, uh -huh. a people laden with iniquity. A people laden with iniquity. Read. A seed of evildoers. Uh -huh. Children that are corruptors. Read. That have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are all gone away back. All right, from there, let's go to um, Jeremiah 4 and 22. Because it says that we are a sinful nation laden with iniquity. Let's get some more understanding on that. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 4 and verse 22. Uh -huh. For my people is foolish. For what? For my people is foolish. What is foolish? Brothers, brothers, what is foolish? Dumb. Huh? Dumb. Dumb? Okay. According to the Bible, what is foolish? So, sin. Sin. First Samuel 13, 13. Foolishness is sin. So, our, our people are full of sin. Read. They have not known me. Uh-huh. They are sottish children. They are sottish children. They are sottish children. That's why they come from all over the state, all from the southeast, to come to a homecoming. To, 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 to gather in the midst of fornication, adultery, so on and so forth. Read. And they have none understanding. They have what? They have none understanding. Uh-huh. They are wise to do evil. They are wise to do evil. Read. But to do good, uh -huh. they have no knowledge. So, but to do good, they have no knowledge. That's where you brothers come in at. Because our people don't have any understanding of what's right and what's wrong. That's why the Most High God must send the prophets to go out and show our people. Because the scripture says in Ezekiel 22, they make no difference between the clean and the unclean. Y'all understand that? That's why when we go and teach, keep it basic. Keep it basic. There's no need to go deep. I love events like this because the basic precept sheet is all that you need because that's what you're going to be dealing with. It's going to be basic problems in front of you. Blonde hair, women wearing pants, uh, brothers in the midst of fornication, drunkenness, so on and so forth. So we got to keep the scriptures very specific and Bible-based. I know brothers like to be deep. Keep everything you say out of the scriptures. All right, go back to Isaiah. So it says that we do not know how to do good and we're wise to do evil. Wise to do evil. Read that. Verse 4. Yep. Ah, sinful nation, uh -huh. a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. 
They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. Uh -huh. They are gone away backward. Read. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick uh -huh. and the whole heart faint. What does it mean when it says the whole head is sick? What does that mean? The whole head. The whole head. Soldier Lou. Uh, our leadership is uh, our, our leadership. Is, we don't have good leadership. Our leadership is basically weak. Okay, but it, when it says the whole head, what it, it is the leadership. But what else? Uh, the whole the whole head talking about all of Israel. There you go. There you go. The whole nation, from the chief of the chiefest to the bottom. This this. You will find sinners in the middle of all the, our nation. The whole head is sick. Keep reading. Verse 6. From the sole of the foot, uh -huh. even unto the head, uh -huh. there is no soundness in it. Read. But wounds and bruises and putrefying sores, they have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. So, these sores have come onto our nation because of what? Because of sin, right? Because of sin. So, why? We're going now. We're gonna go to a scripture that explains why these sores. Because can you see a sore? Can you see a sore? Can you feel it? Yes. Everybody knows it. But why has it not been fixed? Let me show you. Go to Lamentations two and thirteen. Because the thing is, our whole nation, everybody knows exactly what the problems are. Anybody can tell you what the problem is. But the whole head is sick, and the the, the wounds have not been um, corrected. They never been stitched up. They never been put back together because we refuse to go to the scriptures. Read that. The Book of Lamentations, chapter two and verse thirteen. Uh huh. What thing shall I take to witness for thee? What thing shall I liken to thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? Uh huh. What shall I equal to thee that I may comfort thee, O virgin daughter of Zion? For thy breach is great like the sea. Who can heal thee? You see that? Who can heal thee? Talking about what? Those what? Those sores that we got. Because our breaches are great. There's a great break in our nation. All right, read. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. Uh-huh. And they have not discovered thine iniquity. They have what? They have not discovered thine iniquity. The scripture says they have not discovered thine iniquity. Read. To turn away thy captivity. Now, so what is the solution? What is the solution from reading that scripture? So, Amos. Uh, first off, Speak up. First off, people gotta acknowledge our sins and discover our iniquity that we're in, uh -huh. and then that's gonna turn our captivity. There away. you go. Y'all see that? So that scripture should be brought out a lot today. And it makes it's common sense. It says they have not discovered thine iniquity to turn away thy captivity. So as soon as what happens, what happens? As soon as we what? <laughs> discover our sins, right? We show our people what the issue is. Sister, you can't wear pants. Uh, brother, you can't do this, can't do that. As soon as we do that and we change our ways, what happens? We out of captivity. Pretty simple, right? So make sure we focus on revealing the sins to our people. All right, we gotta make sure we're doing that. Reverse, uh, you have some? Yeah, I wanna bring out a point. Who has the precept to show just that? That it says, if we come back to God's laws, let me hear a soldier right here, that our captivity will be turned around. Who has that precept? Uh, 1 Kings chapter 8 verse 46. No, nah, I don't want that. It says turn that captivity. It's, it's specific. Uh, yes. This brother right here. Um, I believe it's Leviticus 26. No. No. Uh, yes. Shalom leadership, Brother Amos. Uh, Deuteronomy 30 and 3. Exactly. Deuteronomy 30 and 3. Let's read that. Good job. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30 and verse 3. Let's start at verse 1. Verse 1. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations 
whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee, mm -hmm. and shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul. So it's showing us what? When the Most High God drove us out to these various nations, for example, we are in America today. All right? We are captives here in America. It says, when we turn our hearts back to the Father, read on, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. He will do what? Turn thy captivity. Read. And have compassion upon thee. And will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God have scattered thee. So when you're out there on the streets, that's the gospel. That's the good news. It's as simple as that. Just like Luke 168 through uh, 71. We will be redeemed as long as we do what, brothers? Keep the, Keep the commandments. Exactly. All right. From there, let's go to Deuteronomy 28, 15. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. This is exactly how the curses came upon us. How we begin with these wounds. All right. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Jump down to verse 48. Verse so, 40. Now we see very plain and simple. We don't keep the commandments, sin is going to come upon us. All right, read that. Verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee uh -huh. in hunger uh -huh. and in thirst uh -huh. and in nakedness and in want of all things. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck Read. until he have destroyed thee. So now we realize, as a, as a nation, what state are we in? We are what? We are a destroyed nation. We are a destroyed nation. That's why you brothers must start from the beginning when we're teaching our people. you got to make the scriptures plain to be understood. All right? Just like Nehemiah said. So, understanding that we are destroyed, are we destroyed forever or for a time period? All right? Let's go to Baruch 4 and 6. Because right now you're seeing the nation of Israel rising up all across the four corners of the earth, especially in the states. All right? And it's because we are finally coming back to God's law, statutes, and commandments. But we got to be able to show our people why we went through these things. And it's not permanent. That's why uh, one thing I was talking with Captain Zakar about, make sure when you brothers teach it, we got to tell people that we are under curses. We are not a cursed people. Y'all understand the difference? When you're under curses, that means you can come out from under. If you ain't cursed people, that's what you are. You can't, you can't change it. All right, read that. The book of Baruch, chapter 4 and verse 6. Uh -huh. You were sold to the nations, not for your destruction. Not for what? Not for your destruction. You got to let our people know. We were not put here for our destruction. Just because you're in the hellhole don't mean you stay there. Read. But because you move God to wrath. But because we move God to wrath. And you can go right back to showing them that we are what? God's child. It's just punishment. The same way we discipline our children, it's the same thing the Most High God did to us. Was that it or not? Ye were delivered unto the enemies. Uh huh. Go to uh, 2 Maccabees 6 and 12. So that was the purpose of us being in this state, being in America, being sold on slave ships. It was for our punishment, not for our destruction. Read that. And real quick, yeah. Okay. The way off, just um, like for example, when you said uh, you were sold to the nations not for your destruction, but because you moved God to rather, he, he gave you the sense to give. That you liken it to the way a parent deals with a child. Let's get Deuteronomy 8 and 5 real quick. Gotcha. A quick precept to go to. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 5. Thou shalt also consider in thy heart that as a man chasteneth his son. As a what? As a man chasteneth his son. Uh -huh. So the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Come on. Verse 6. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God. And that's what it goes back to repeatedly. Which one? Want? Uh, 2 Maccabees 6 and 12. Always going back to the laws of God, the laws of God, the laws of God. That's why we must keep the commandments. All right? We got to keep the commandments, and we must teach the commandments on the streets, brothers. Read that. The book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 6 and verse 12. Uh-huh. Now, I beseech those that read this book, that they be not discouraged. That they what? 
that they be not discouraged by what? For these calamities. So we gotta be able to teach our people and show them. Don't be discouraged by what you're seeing in the streets, by seeing your brothers in the slums, in the ghettos, in the in the prisons. These things are for a greater purpose. Read. But that they judge those punishments not to be for destruction. Not for your destruction, read. But for a chastening of our nation. You see that? That's how they gotta look at it. Because if they look at everything as ah, woe is me, woe is me, they will never, they will never hearken to the words of God. We got to be able to show them the curses that we're going through and be able to exhort them. Show them that these things are only for a sign for you to repent, for you to know who you are. All right, from there, let's go to Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 9. So, understanding that the punishments that we went through were not for our, de not for our destruction, the Most High God always left a remedy. All right, today, that's, the, that's what you see today, the Israelites. Those that keep the commandments, we are the remnant that's left among the people. To show our people and interpret this Bible to them so they can understand why they're going through the things that they're going through. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 9. Uh-huh. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. A what? A very small remnant. How small is that remnant going to be, brother? <laughs> One third. One third. So except the most high God has left a third of us, read. We should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. What does that mean? Somebody explain that for me. Let me uh go ahead, so so the um Sammy. Well we knew uh Sodom and Gomorrah fell from um um, they brother can't say it. <laughs> can't say it. From homosexuality and, uh -huh. and many other uh, lusts, we would have been the same way, overcome by the lust of the world. Right. So, explain it. So, what would happen? What would we be like? All of us will be either gay or there you go, just wicked. There you go. So we got to understand the importance of being in these scriptures. That's also letting you know. Guess what? When you leave this truth. Are you going to be, what does the scripture say? Is it, are we going to be in a better state or a worse state when you leave this truth? Worse. Worse. A worse state. So understand, these are the things that should inspire you to, to, to follow this truth. You can't leave this truth because you're going to find yourself being, guess what? Just like Sodom and Gomorrah. All right? From there, let's go to um, Romans 11. Romans 11, chapter 1. And we're going to read down to verse 5. So we are that remnant that's left behind to fulfill the scriptures. Because there's a lot of things that we got to fulfill. If that one third going to wake up, somebody has to tell them. Somebody has to show them the way. All right, read that. The book of Romans, chapter 11 and verse 1. Uh-huh. I say then, have God cast away his people? Uh-huh. God forbid. Read. For I also am an Israelite. Of the seed of Abraham, uh -huh. of the tribe of Benjamin, Read. God have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Uh -huh. What ye not, what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, uh -huh. and dig down thine altars. So he was in a state just like us today. A lot of times, most of you brothers go to work, you're the only person there that keeps the commandments. You ride the bus, you're the only brother that's keeping the commandments. You in, a, you in a small city, you're the only brother that keeps the commandments. So, Elijah was in that same place. Like, man, I'm the only person here that's trying to do what the Most High God is saying. Read. And I am left alone. That's what he thought. He thought he was alone. Read. And they seek my life. Uh-huh. But what saith the answer of God unto him? What did the Most High God say to him? Read. I have reserved to myself 7,000 men. Who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. So there's always more brothers and sisters out there that the Most High just waiting on to be activated. Read. Even so, then, at this present time. At what? At this present time. Just like today, in this present time. Read. Also, there is a remnant. There's a what? There is a remnant. Read. According to the election of grace. And how is that remnant going to be waking up, brothers? Through who? Through us. Through you, brothers. When we go to events like this, you brothers that go to the streets every week, the brothers that hit the fly missions, that is how that remnant is going to be waking up. That is why you brothers got to understand the importance of your roles in taking this truth seriously. Because we got to fulfill these scriptures. From there, let's go to um, Levitation. No, not Levitation. Jeremiah 3 and 15. All right, understanding that it's our job to wake up the remnant, 
according to the election of grace at this present time, the Most High God chose each and every one of you brothers. Read that. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 3 and verse 15. Uh -huh. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart. Right. So pastors are in the Bible. I know it always has a negative connotation uh, in the truth, but that, that word is actually in the Bible. Read. Which shall feed you uh -huh. with knowledge. With what? With knowledge. Read. And understanding. What is knowledge? What is the knowledge? Um, Soldier Zebedee? No. Yes, sir. Gotcha. What's the knowledge? The knowledge according to the scripture is Malachi 2 and 7. Good. Correct. So, God's laws. That is the only reason why you brothers are waking up to this truth. The Most High God wants to instill in each and every one of us the laws of God and teach our people exactly that. Alright? You want to walk on up to break down revelations and second answers and all is to teach our people God's laws. That is how we're going to receive salvation. All right? From there, go to Jeremiah 1 and 10. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 1 and verse 10. I want 5. Verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, uh -huh. I knew thee. Before he formed each and every one of us, he knew us. Read. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, mm -hmm. I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet. And did what? And I ordained thee a prophet. Three. Unto the nations. Right. So each and every one of you men were ordained to do what you are doing today. It's not by chance that some of you brothers didn't get caught doing A, B, and C. Or you got or you got off from A, B, and C. Or you didn't make it doing this or make it doing that. It's not by chance. The most high God ordained you to do a job. That is why you are here. From there, let's go to uh, Lamentations 3. In 22. Because understanding that the Most High God ordained us to do a job, you owe the Most High God for that. The book of Lamentations, chapter 3, and verse 22. Uh huh. It is of the Lord's mercy. It is what? It is of the Lord's mercy. It is of the Lord's mercy. I know each and every one of you in this room got a story that you could tell where you don't know how it happened, but you got out of it. Whatever it may be. The sister that got AIDS today, somehow, you, you did that, and you ain't got nothing today. Or you caught on camera doing something, and they couldn't find it. Whatever it may be. But all of us have a story to tell, and it's not by chance that it happened. How did it happen? Oops. It is of the Lord's mercy. It is of the Lord's mercy. Three. That we are not consumed. That we are not consumed. That we didn't die in our sins. Read. Because his compassions fail not. Because his compassions fail not. Because he already knew that one day you were going to fulfill his will. To go teach the 12 tribes of Israel. For now, let's go to Luke 17 and 10. And yeah, then also, um, taking it over the individual and looking at us as a nation, right? Because when our people hear them curses, you know, them curses they hit, they hit home a lot of times. And our people get depressed, they can't. They listen like, man, God did this to us. Also show them, this Psalms 124. Because when you examine the heathen, they hate our guts. It's, it's plain as day, once I turn up the heat, right? We can put the death all over the place. But these are the same people who had us. They had us with yokes. They could have just exterminated us. They had us off. 1492, 16, 19. We was finished, conquered everything, right? Well, listen to this. Psalms 124, start with one. Psalms chapter 124, verse 1. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, uh -huh. now, may say, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us. When the heathens rose up against us, when they had us in shackles, chains, and collars, come on. Then they had swallowed us up quick. What would they have done before? Then they had swallowed us up quick. There would not be an Israelite left. It was not for the Lord. Our people need to know that. Read on. When their wrath was kindled against us. It says when their wrath was kindled against us. Read it one more time. Then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. So it's the Lord who is preserving us as a nation of people. Get your Judas real quick. Judas now. These are different things that we can exhort them. Show them the curses, their nationality, while we in this predicament, and then show them that the Lord God has mercy on us. Judas 9, 14. Judas, chapter 9 and verse 14. And make every nation and tribe to acknowledge to do what? To acknowledge that thou art the God of all power and might, uh -huh. and that there is none other that protecteth the people of Israel but thou. 
We gotta let Israel know, don't nobody love you but God. They gotta understand that. Every, these niggas hate your guts. The only friend you got is the most I got. All praises. All praises. Uh, go to 1 Corinthians 9 and 22 real quick. Now the first precept, what was that? The Lamentations 3? Yeah. Um, what the officer just sprung out. Read this real quick, officer. First Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 22. Uh -huh. To the weak I became as weak, uh -huh. that I might gain the weak. Read. I have made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Why did Paul say that? Why did Paul say that? Let me hear it, brother. Go ahead. Pass the mic. I told you, you don't have to do all this camp. He, he had to get down to that level. You know what I'm saying? So they didn't feel like he was uh, looking down on them. Okay, what else? Think about think about uh, what officers going over. What, why else would he do that? To be able to break it down so they can understand. Okay. Instead of saying something that goes over their head. That's correct. What else? Let me hear on uh, Soldier Aaron. Soldier Aaron, um, Paul, when he was dealing with him, he had to show him that he basically um, was under the same bondage as well. He had to make a, himself personable and relate to the people. Okay, I like the answer better because why? Paul, Paul, Paul used to do what? Y'all can say it out loud. Exactly. He used to kill people who believed on who. Right. right. So once once he saw the vision, all right. Once he woke up, he realized what? Okay. If it wasn't for the Most High, right, I would be just like all my other brothers and sisters, be caught up in wickedness and diverse lust. So when the Scripture says to the weak, I became as weak. That's why he did that. He had to come out to their level, just like us. Every last one of us can relate. I know I've been to the homecoming. I've been to the classic. We've been to the club. We've been there. So we can't act. Um, puffed up, or as if we've never been down that road, all right? If it wasn't for the most high God, we'd be caught up in the same things. So when, when it was time for Paul to teach the people, he did what? He related to them, all right? Because he's been in their shoes before. So when we go out to the streets, we gotta be the same way, all right? Make sure that we reach the people on their level, all right? Also, uh, Romans 12. It's like what also seeing also my thoughts just bring up. Romans 12 and 16. Like also saying, all right, we're not here to break down Ezra's at uh, Sam U today. We're not here to break down Revelations. Romans 12, 16. Romans chapter 12 and verse 16. Be of the same mind, one toward another. Come on. Mind not the high things. It says, mind not high things. Come on. But condescend to Con men. Condescend is usually um, spoken in a negative connotation, but it does not have a negative meaning. You understand? Con uh, condescend means to, if you're talking to a five-year-old, you want to teach them what? Color scriptures. You see Job is black. What color are you? You understand? Be able to reach everybody. You understand? You see a brother walking up. He got the the Greek symbols on the shirt. You know this brother's in a fraternity. You want condescend to men of lower state. Maybe you can relate. I had a friend who was in fraternity. I know what it's all about. It's witchcraft. It's idolatry. You got to come out of that. Don't be like, oh, this brother right here. Like it's like he's condemned, like there's no salvation or repentance for him. You gotta read from the top. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Read on. Be not wise in your own conceit. Don't be wise in your own conceit, so don't be puffed up. Do you understand when you, when you feel like you're too high or you're too holy to reach a brother? Right. Oh, praise Luke 17 and 10 also. All right. So now we gotta understand that this is what we are required to do. Part of you keeping the commandments, okay, that's 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 the start. But now we gotta fulfill your real role, which is going out and teaching our people. And under exactly this going exactly what they just said. Don't be high minded in doing it. Alright, read that. The book of Luke, chapter 17 and verse 10. Uh huh. So likewise ye when you shall have done all those things which I commanded you. When you have done all those things that I commanded of you. Read. Say, we are unprofitable servants. Say what? We are unprofitable servants. So it's not about us. We are unprofitable servants. Why? We have done that which was our duty to which, do. Which was what? Which was our duty to do. So it's your, it's your brother's job to be here. That is your duty. That is your duty. That is your requirement. That's what the Most High expects out of you. That's the standard for you all. 
Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Read it one more time. The book of Luke, chapter 17 and verse 10. Uh -huh. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which I commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. Uh -huh. We have done that which was our duty to do. Alright. Yes, I know. Yes, sir. Yeah. Get us Second Timothy chapter 1. Because that's our entire duty in this truth. That's what you were called to do. That's what you were ordained to do. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. The book of Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 9. Who have saved us and called us with an holy calling. Not according to our works. So not because of anything that you did spectacular, how many scriptures you knew, or whatever the case was. Come on. But according to his own purpose and grace. But according to the Lord's own purpose and his grace, he called you in his truth with a holy calling. Come on. Which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So what were we ordained to do before the world began? Verse 11. Verse 11. Whereunto? I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. So y'all see that? From the foundation of the earth, since the world began, every man in this room was ordained to go to this event today to go and be a preacher, a teacher to the Gentiles. They're Gentiles because they're in a Gentile state of mind. They don't know that they're Israel. The vast majority of them. Some of them do and don't give a damn. But those that majority of them don't and so we are ordained to teach them y'all understand that yes, sir. all praises revelation 10 and uh eight all praises i like that one also that was good that was good all praises. got that from the d <laughs> <laughs> Read that. the book of revelation chapter 10 and verse 8 uh -huh. and the voice which i heard from heaven spake unto me again and mm -hmm. said go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. Read. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. Uh -huh. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter. So he said, Take it and eat it. What is he making reference to? The Bible, the scriptures. Take it and eat it. When you read throughout the scriptures, a lot of times the scriptures are referred to as food. It is referred to as food. Because without it, you starve and you die. Just like in the truth. Also, tell them that saying uh, that Deacon Malachi uh, said about the eat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah Atlantic Camp, y'all know. Uh, Deacon Malachi always said, he says, um, think about how many times a day you eat. People eat with a three to five times a day. Think about how much time you feed your soul. How, how many times are you taking out to study or read the scriptures? Does, do they match up or does one outweigh the other? Exactly. You got to make sure you feed the spiritual man more than you're feeding the carnal man. Let's get a precept real quick. Let's go to Sirach 15 and 3. All right. Because it says, take it and eat. If you're simple, you wouldn't understand it. But we want to make sure we understand what does this make a reference to? The book of Sirach, chapter 15 and verse 3. Uh-huh. With the bread. With the what? With the bread. With the bread of what? Of understanding. You see that? That understanding, that wisdom is food. Read. Shall she feed him. Uh-huh. And give him the water of wisdom to drink. See, bread and water is the scriptures. Is the scriptures. Go back to Revelation 10. And uh, finish verse 9. Verse 9. And it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Right. It shall be in thy belly bitter, but in thy mouth sweet as honey. Who can, who can tell me what that's going into? Soldier Aaron. It's going into um, some things is going to be sweet to our people, hearing that they're the greatest people on earth, us exhorting them. Mm -hmm. But the bitter things as well is going to be, okay, you got to get out the pants. You got to stop smoking weed. You got to stop being a whore monger. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. Read verse 10. Verse 10. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand uh -huh. and ate it up. Uh -huh. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. Uh -huh. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. Read. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. So understand, that understanding that we are getting and eating is not to be kept to yourself. It's not to be put in a corner anymore, as the scripture said. It's your job, so you brothers that came from camps with 400 and 500 brothers, and y'all the only brothers that's here, 
you make sure you rebuke them brothers. Because it's their job to go prophesy unto the people. Y'all understand that? It's not a choice. It's not a choice to do these things. Alright? Uh, from there, go to Ezekiel 3 and verse 2. So he said, take it and eat it and go prophesy before many nations. The book of Ezekiel verse 2. Uh -huh. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that roll. Uh -huh. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Three. Then did I eat it. And it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Three. And he said unto me. And he said unto me. Three. Son of man, uh -huh. go. Get thee unto the house of Israel. Go to the Chinese man. Unto the house of Israel. Go to the Arab man. The house of Israel. And do what? And speak with my words unto them. And speak with his words unto him. Stay in the Bible. Stay in the Bible. The scriptures is what's going to break our people down. That's all you need is this Bible. From there, let's go to uh, Isaiah 13 and verse 2. So now that we got the scriptures, we ate the scriptures up. We got the bread of understanding. Brothers are learning who they are. They're learning the, the, the precepts. What must we do with this understanding? The book of Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 2. Uh-huh. Lift ye up a banner. Do what? Lift ye up a banner. What's the banner, brothers? The Bible. The Bible. Bishops then was in Cuba lifting up the banner, right? They said, this, 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 this sounds like revolution. It was lifting up the banner. And what happens? Read. Upon the high mountain, uh -huh. exalt the voice unto them. Uh -huh. Shake the hand. Shake the what? Shake the hand. Read. That they may go into the gates of the nobles. Right. And that's what happened. Because Bishop said in one of the pictures, he said one of the pastors went to go tell the police officers what was going on. And then the next thing you know, they, they in jail. And they locked up. That's what you must do. But that would not have happened if they were speaking their own words. That power comes from the scriptures of this Bible. All right? From there, let's go to um, Jeremiah 51 and 12. So it says, lift ye up the banner upon the high mountain. That's what we're doing today. The high mountain is America. That's why everything is learned and pushed. The Read book that. of Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 12. Uh-huh. Set up the standard. Do what? Set up the standard. Set up the standard. The standard is God's laws. That's what it says you must pass under the rod. That's the same thing. That's the standard. Read. Upon the walls of Babylon. Uh-huh. Make the watch strong. Do what? Make the watch strong. That's what you brothers did. Because guess what? If you brothers wouldn't have came today, we would have been very outnumbered. We'd have about six brothers at camp today. But all praise you brothers made it. We can have five camps. And going out there to prophesy unto our people. We got to make the watch strong. Read. Set up the watchman. Do what? Set up the watchman. That's what we're doing. That's our job. We are the watchman for our people. Lord wills, we, we gather some souls today. But we got to make the watch strong and set up the watchman. Read. Prepare the ambushes. Mm -hmm. For the Lord have both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. From there, go to um, Jeremiah. No, yeah. Isaiah, I'm sorry. Isaiah 30 and 20. So it says, set up the standard, make the watch strong. Isaiah 30 and 20. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 20. Uh-huh. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, uh -huh. yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. Right. We're not going to be hidden from our people. We're going to be right where our people can see us. So there ain't going to be one brother out there passing out flyers. Read. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Our eyes are going to see our teachers. That's why it's so important for you brothers to make sure you're doing what you can in your cities. Whether it's fly missions, when there's an event, that you make sure we're there. Because we got to fulfill the scripture. If we ain't doing it, how can the scripture be fulfilled? It won't. And we're going to continue to be in captivity. Read. And thine eyes and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee uh -huh. saying, this is the way. Saying what? This is the way. Saying this is the way. This is the way, which is the keeping of the commandments. Read. Walk ye in it. Uh-huh. When ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left. From there, let's go to Jeremiah 50 and 20. So it's our job, it's our duty to be in the streets, instructing our people when they're in the midst of wickedness. So we can tell them the right way to turn. 
Jeremiah. Yep, Jeremiah 50 and verse 20. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 50 and verse 20. Uh -huh. In those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none. 51, I'm sorry. 51 and 20. Yes, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51 and verse 20. Uh -huh. Thou art my battle axe. Thou art what? Thou art my battle axe. And the Most High God says, we are his battle axe. Read. And weapons of war. And what? And weapons of war. Brothers, what are weapons of war used for? Mass destruction. Mass destruction. I like that. Now, let me hear this. How, how are we, as carnal men with no superpowers, half y'all brothers can't ditch 225, how are we weapons of war, according to the Bible? Officer Jerry. Go ahead. I want it. Huh? Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10 See, I have set thee this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. So we're here to destroy all the lies that our people have been taught and to build it back up with the laws of God. Okay. All praise to the most high. I love that answer. That was actually with the next scripture. So you already hit it on the head. So from there. So so yeah. we were officers going into about how we the most I got weapons of war. Do that mean we go out there and we give my own emotions and opinions? No, let's get Hosea six and five. That don't mean you go out there and you give them, you know, uh, uh, autobiography and your life story. Scripture we preach Christ. Hosea six and five. Hosea chapter six and verse five. Therefore have I hewn them by the prophet. The Lord said he hewn us, he hewn them by us. You know what I'm saying? It's our job about that and cut our people to provoke repentance. Read on. I have slain them uh -huh. by the words of my mouth. The Lord is using us while we use his words. He used us, we use his words. You know what I'm saying? It's a cycle. Read from the top. Therefore have I hewn them by the prophet. The Lord says I have hewn them or cut them in pieces by the prophets. Come on. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. The Lord have already destroyed them. Whatever doctrine, whatever heresy they have, it's already, it's already in the Bible. It's already destroyed. All you got to do is just locate the scripture. Come on. And thy judgments are as the light that goeth forth. It says, and our judgment to our people is as the light that goeth forth. All praises. All praises. I hope y'all better highlight that one. I like that. 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. Alright? As his weapons of mass destruction. Let's go, let's go in a little further. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 10, and verse 4. Uh-huh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We're not carnal. All right, read. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Right, exactly what Officer Jared just said. It's our job to go out and tear down any strongholds that our people have, whether it's Egyptology, Christianity, um, atheism, science, Buddhism, fraternities, Hinduism, Freemasonry, whatever it may be, homosexuality. All of these different uh, sins that our people are in, are in, it's our job to go into the scriptures and give them the solution to the problem. Read. Casting down imaginations uh -huh. and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Read. And bringing into captivity. And doing what? And bringing into captivity uh -huh. every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every one of those thoughts got to be brought to the obedience of Christ. Meaning at the end of the day, that's why I love asking people questions when I teach. You want to make sure they understand exactly what you're teaching. Don't teach to yourself. Interact with the people. Build the people up. So you know when they leave, they understood what you said. So guess what? It's on them whether or not they do it from that point on. But read verse 6. This is the key part. Verse 6. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience uh -huh. when your obedience is fulfilled. Who can explain that? I don't want you to ask. So, uh, so, uh, you soldier off. Soldier ship. Soldier ship. When you're ready to keep all the commandments and deal with the, the, the sins that you're in, you'll be ready to have that readiness to, to teach the same thing that you've been taught and got yourself right. All praise. All praise. Absolutely correct. But a lot of times we do the opposite, right? Brothers coming to the truth, 
We want to teach everybody and we ain't change one thing about ourselves. So that was absolutely correct. So you got to be ready to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Meaning you brothers are taking care of business in your cities. That's why your leadership said, all right, now this brother can go travel. Because you do what you're supposed to do in your own town. We don't want brothers that ain't profitable in whatever city they in to go, go in other places. That's why the bishops and the deacons, they are the um, they're, they're ambassadors of, of international travel. It wouldn't make any sense to have a brother that just showed up last week going to spread the truth. And he, he don't know left from right. Y'all understand that? <coughs> All right, from there, let's go to um, Nehemiah 8 and 8. Nehemiah 8 and 8. Because this is how you bring down, oh no, no, yeah, yeah, that's what I want. Nehemiah 8 and 8. This is how you bring everything into subjection. Like the officer just brought out a beautiful precept. What was that in Hosea? Hosea 6 and 5. Hosea 6 and 5, I like that. We, they have been hewn by the prophets. Like that. Read that. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8 and verse 8. Uh -huh. So they read in the book and the law of God uh -huh. distinctly. The, the what? Distinctly. Distinctly, brothers. Make sure if you're the reader today, read with might. Read with might. Understand what the brother's trying to bring out. If he's reading Acts 5 and 31, guess what he want to bring out? That he died for who? Israel. Israel. If we in Deuteronomy 28 and we showing the curses, and we want to show how we got to, to, to the Americas. We want to emphasize what? That we came on what? Ships. Ships. Don't just read just to read. Have a purpose. Read that again. So they read in the book and the law of God distinctly uh -huh. and gave the sense. And then what? And gave the sense. Going right back to what I just said. Don't talk or teach to yourself. Teach to the people. Teach to the people. Interact with the people. Ask them questions. You got to give them the sense of the scriptures. That's our job. All right, from there, Hebrews 4 and 1, 12. Hebrews, Hebrews 4 and 12. And yeah, go ahead, my bad. Yeah, finish that. And cause them. And to, what? And cause them uh -huh. to understand the reading. And cause them to understand the reading. That is our purpose. That is our job. It's not just to, to cut every person that comes up with the scriptures, a yelling stream. I'm, have passion, but have a purpose. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. Have a purpose in teaching. You're trying to edify them to come back. Read that. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4. Yep, Hebrews 4 and 12. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4 and verse 12. Uh-huh. For the word of God is quick. For what? For the word of God is quick Read. and powerful uh -huh. and sharper than any two-edged sword. That's why we tell you, brothers, to stay in the scriptures. Stay in the scriptures, teach what you know. Let the Bible do the work. Just expound upon the scriptures. If you don't know a lot of scriptures, that's fine. I'm going to show you in a second. One of, one of y'all forefathers, he didn't know a lot of scriptures. But he taught with passion. He taught with a purpose. Read. Piercing, even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Read. And of the joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You see that? That's why sometimes brothers and sisters come up, the second you pull the scripture, they're gone. Because they can't stand these scriptures. But you can interact and talk all day. Go to the scriptures. That's how you separate who's serious and who's not. Real fast. You don't want to waste your time for 30 minutes with somebody that's not sincere with the word of God. Alright, from there, let's go to um, 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 10. So we got to make sure we know how to use that sword. Because we just read of how sharp and how piercing it is. It, does, it doesn't play any games. It, it makes things very clear really fast. Yep. Just like the officer said, go to Wisdom of Solomon 18 and 15 real quick. Just like the officer said, somebody may be listening. Um, you know, you may be teaching who we are. That we the Israelites. But as soon as you get to the law. All right, it does something to him. All right, read that real quick. The book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18 and verse 15. Uh-huh. Thine almighty word. Thine what? Thine almighty word. Uh-huh. Leap down from heaven, out of thy royal throne, as a fierce man of war. As a what? As a fierce man of war. So that's a, why are you talking to me like that? So I'm, I'm talking to you monotone. What are you talking about? I'm not yelling at you, but it's the word of God. When, when they live in a wicked life, when God's laws hit them, it's like they got punched in the face. All right, read it again. Thine almighty word leapt down from heaven, out of thy royal throne, 
as a fierce man of war mm -hmm. into the midst of a land of destruction. That's what the scriptures have the power to do. Just like the officer's going over, he's being redundant. That's why we must stay in the scriptures at all times, all right? Second Thessalonians 2 and verse 10. First Thessalonians 2 and 10, I'm sorry. First Thessalonians 2 and 10. The book of First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 10. Uh-huh. Ye are witnesses, and God also, how holy and justly and unblameably we behave ourselves among you that, be that believe. Uh-huh. As you know, how he exhorted and comforted. As we what? How he exhorted and comforted. How we exhorted and comforted. Read. And charged every one of you uh -huh. as a father doeth his children. You see that? That's how we got to talk to our people. We got to exhort and comfort our individuals as a father does his children. We got to teach with our people with love. Because th those are brothers and sisters. We're not, we're not talking to the, to, the, to, the, to the enemy. These brothers and sisters have an opportunity to repent. Read that again. The book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 2 and verse 10. No, read verse 11. Verse 11. Uh -huh. As you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doeth his children. Uh-huh. That he that ye will walk worthy of God, who have called you unto his kingdom and glory. Right. We gotta let them know what's awaiting them once they choose this life. Because everything else is death. Once you come into the commandments, this is life. Even that uh to some it's a sweet savior. Alright? Because and that's another reason why you gotta bring out the scriptures, because demons are going to come out. To some people it's going to sound good, to others it's not going to sound as well. But you won't know, you won't be able to tell the spirits if you're not in the scriptures. The scriptures will do that for you. It's not up to you to try to figure out who wants to listen and who doesn't. Just teach the word. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 16. Uh -huh. To the one we are the savor of death uh -huh. unto death. And to the other the savor of life unto life. Right. Because some people hear this and they say, you know what, that's just what I was looking for. And then others hear it and they're like, that's the, that's, I can't do that. That's going to kill everything that I'm doing in my lifestyle. All right. So for now, let's go to Acts 18 and verse 24. Before we move on, get Ezekiel 2 and, uh, Ezekiel 2 and 7. Because remember, remember what, what we read earlier, I forget exactly where, in, um, in Corinthians, where Paul said he went and talked to save some, that Lord's will he would save some. So we're not, you're not going to be able to save everybody. And it's going to be a hell of a lot of uh, rebelliousness, rebelliousness uh, a lot of scorning, all of that stuff. Same thing as last year, I'm sure. Ezekiel 2 and 7. The book of Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 7. And thou shalt speak my words. Whose words? My words. So not your own words. You're using God's words. Come on unto them whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. So whether they hear it or whether they come up scoffing and keep it moving, it is what it is. We are out there to save some. Most I will, if it's one, I forget exactly where it is, where it says if, if, if there's one, yeah, it's in Luke. you ain't got to get it, but yeah, it's in, it's in Luke, yeah. Where is that? Um, it says if, if one repents, then the angels in heaven rejoice. So if it's out there with just one brother that we reach in the six hours, all praise to the Most High. But the Lord said you got to teach His words to to what house? Or, I'm sorry, read on. Whether they hear, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. Because they're gonna be out there drunk, high, horny, and everything else. So that's why we got to make sure that we're using the scriptures to be able to cut every high thing, every doctrine, every thought, every, any evil out there, we gotta make sure we're using the scriptures to be able to cut that down. I wanna bring out, let me bring out one point of what he just said about the spirits that's gonna be out there. Give me Job 31 and one real quick. I know there's a lot of young, young brothers, young spirits, uh, maybe they first expo or an event like this, but uh, we must stay in the spirit. The book of Job, chapter 31, in verse one, uh huh. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Uh huh. Why then should I think upon a maid? Read. For what portion of God is there from above, and what inheritance of the Almighty from on high? 
is not destruction to the wicked. It's showing you what? That when you look at a woman to lust after her, you've committed what in your heart, brothers? Adultery. Right. So that's why the, the forefather Job said, I made a covenant with my eyes. Think about this. We are the prototype of righteousness. So when we go out there, we are literally, by example, by what we teach, we are setting the tone of what a righteous man looks like. So, if you are the prototype and you catch yourself looking at booty, they say like, ah, oh, I knew it. I knew this. I knew it. I knew they couldn't actually do it. That's what you got to do. You got to be mindful. We teach. There's two ways to teach. You teach how. What's the first one? You actually verbally. And the second one is what? Example. Example. Exactly. Be mindful of that. All right. It was uh, Luke 15 and 10. Read that for us. Let me up. Luke 15 and 10. Yes, sir. The book of Luke, chapter 15 and verse 10. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. So, one sinner that repented. Go ahead. Very, yes. Thank you. I appreciate you finding that, folks. Over one sinner, over one brother, over one soul that ends up repenting. It made it be that one that's the 144,000, that one that's a part of the one third that we need in order to, to push us further to getting the hell out of captivity. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. All right. Going into that, go to Job 33 and 23, speaking about that one individual. All right. Understand, brothers, we, we are profitable servants, but understand on the flip side, you are very, very important to this movement. <laughs> and you are very, very important to the most side. Read that. The book of Job, chapter 33 and verse 23. Uh-huh. If there be a messenger with him, uh -huh. an interpreter. An interpreter. Somebody that can understand the scriptures. Read. One among a thousand. What? One among a thousand. You all are one among a thousand. And you'll see that today. It's going to be thousands of people. And guess what? Only so many purple shirts. You are one among a thousand, read, to show unto man his uprightness. Right, and it's our job to show that man his uprightness, what he can be, exactly what Austin just said. We got to be that prototype for our people. We got to set up the standard. We got to be that example, as the scriptures say. That's what we must do. From there, go to Acts 18 and 24. Acts chapter 18 and verse 24. The book of Acts chapter 18 and verse 24. Uh-huh. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man, uh -huh. and mighty in the scriptures. And what? Mighty in the scriptures. That's what you brothers want, want to be written about. You want to be as a known a man known to be mighty in the scriptures. But as we read down, we're going to see. He didn't know a lot, but he was mighty in the scriptures. His delivery, the way he dialogued with individuals. It was a beautiful thing to see. Read. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. Uh -huh. And being fervent in the spirit. And being fervent in the spirit. You brothers got to teach with some fight. Read. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. Uh -huh. Knowing only the baptism of John. Knowing what? Knowing only the baptism of John. So did he know a lot, brothers? No. No, he did not know a lot. That's not an excuse not to be a great teacher. You should always be building yourself up. But what you know, teach it with all your might. Read. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. To speak out. To speak boldly in the synagogue. Read. Boom. When Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them. Uh huh. And expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. So just because of the way he taught with fire, these other individuals that had more understanding, he said, "Come on to, me. I'll give you more understanding." Read. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to what? exhorting the disciples uh -huh. to receive him. Read. Who, when he was come, helped them much which had believed through grace. Read. For he mightily convinced the Jews. He did what? He mightily convinced the Jews. That is the end game, brothers. We want to convince people. For so long, the Israelites have been known to be confrontational, so on and so forth. Our job is to gain souls. Read. And that publicly, showing by the scriptures. Showing by what? Showing by the scriptures. That what? That Jesus was Christ. That's also a cut to show you that in the Old Testament, Jesus is in there. How could he show somebody that Jesus was the Christ with the scriptures? What scriptures was he using? The Old Testament. The Old Testament. 
All right, from there, go to, um, what do I want to go to? So he, you know, it just came to my mind. Just lost. All right, go to the Titus 1 and 9. The book of Titus, chapter 1 and verse 9. Uh-huh. Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught. As he hath been taught, read. That he may be able by sound doctrine. By sound doctrine. That's what you brothers get taught. All of us were taught the same scriptures. We all get, we all get taught the same precept sheets. We all watch the same class. Every Sabbath. We all go to camp one-on-one -on -one together. We are on one chord and one mind. Read. Both to exhort and to content and to convince the gainsayers. You see that? Both to exhort and to what? Convince. So what? Convince. Read. The gainsayers. So when somebody come with a contentious spirit, your job is to try to gain them over. Don't go into blasting right away. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. You got to convince these individuals. From there, go to um, Ezekiel. I mean, not Ezekiel. Revelation. Revelation chapter 11. In verse 8. All right. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8. The book of Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8. Uh -huh. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, uh -huh. which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So when it says their dead bodies, what is that making reference to? Um, so it's rock. So just to rock Houston, um, it says, The book of Revelation, chapter 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. And their dead bodies, meaning that they, they don't know these laws yet. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're lying in the city, which is spiritually called Sodom. Because uh, in our cities now, you know, we got open gay marriage, things like that. So uh, in our cities now, it's called uh, spiritually Sodom, where where our Lord was crucified. You know where now uh, they got a white Jesus up, they, things like that. Good, good, good. Read verse nine. Verse nine, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Because we're not actually dead. Read. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. Uh -huh. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. That's what we're getting right now. We get into where that spirit of life is entering into the nation of Israel. Free. And they stood upon their feet. And they did what? And they stood upon their feet. Free. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. A great fear fell, fell upon them which saw them. So, just, just when, we, when we go to the streets today, understand, those looks that you are seeing, every time you brothers go to camp, doing a fly mission, so on and so forth, we are fulfilling the scriptures of the Bible. All right? From there, go to Ezekiel 37. We almost there. We got four more scriptures. Ezekiel 37 and 1. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, and verse 1. Mm -hmm. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, uh -huh. and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Uh -huh. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, Thou knowest. So, Ezekiel was talking with the Most High, and he, he was seeing a vision of the children of Israel, and they were dry bones because what's the opposite of dry? Wet, right? Which means you have what? Water. water. So our people are dry because we don't have what? The water, which is the word of God. That's why we must go into the scriptures. Matter of fact, give me that in uh, Amos real quick about the, uh, the family. This is why people are dry, dry bones. The and book of Amos, chapter 8 and verse 11. Uh -huh. Behold, 
The days come, said the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land. Uh -huh. Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, uh -huh. but of hearing the words of the Lord. But of hearing the words of the Lord. Because like many of us have a test to, in our city or in our hometown, there's nobody teaching the truth. It's our job to make sure that our people no longer are dry bones anymore. We got to give them the water of the word to bring them back into repentance. And it always goes back to the same thing. We got to stay in the scriptures to fulfill what's written here. Our words are not going to fulfill the scriptures a speed up the time. It's not going to happen. Go back to Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 2. Uh -huh. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. Uh -huh. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? Uh -huh. And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones. Do what? Prophesy upon these bones. That's your job, brothers, to prophesy upon these bones. Read. And say unto them, uh -huh. O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. What is the breath? So the same. Uh, the, laws. the laws of God. The laws of God. Keep reading. And ye shall live, saith the Lord God. And I will lay sinews upon you, and I and will bring up flesh upon you, uh -huh. and cover you with skin. What's the skin? It's not a precept, but what's the skin? Think about what skin does. It is, okay. Uh, oh. That's how I did it. Right? So the skin, you're right, you're right. That's right. So the skin does what to your body? It what? It covers you, right? So the skin covers you. So once you understand that you're an Israelite, like you said, what you said it was protection, right? Our identity. identity. So once you have that identity, it protects you from doing certain things. Because as an Israelite, do we have requirements? Yes. Yeah. You understand that. So the skin is the first level. The skin is the first level. Us learning who we are. Now we have exactly what he said. We have that identity. We know who we are. It's just like a lot of times. I'm pretty sure all you brothers don't talk to somebody. They come up, what's your nationality? Oh, I'm an Israelite. Oh, I'm a Levite. Oh, I'm this. I'm that. No fringes, smoking, drinking. That's the skin. All right, read. And put breath in you. And what? And put breath in you. Let you know that those are two different things. The skin and the breath are two different things. We just said what the breath was, the laws of God. That's what we get into now in 2017. Because a lot of our people, they have the skin. More than likely, we're going to teach a few people that know who they are already. But it's your job to exhort them and teach them to understand that they don't have any breath of life. Y'all got to be able to show them that. Read. And ye shall live, uh -huh. and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Read. So I prophesied as I was commanded. Uh -huh. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, uh -huh. bone to his bone. Read. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above. Uh -huh. But there was no breath in them. But there was still no breath. Read. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Uh -huh. So I prophesied. So what? So I prophesied uh -huh. as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. A what? An exceeding great army. So it's our job to fulfill the scripture. We got to become that exceeding great army. Our army has structure, order, and rank. They have a purpose, a mission, things that they must carry out, just like today. We are that army that are carrying out missions from the Most High God. For now, let's go to um, Titus chapter 2 and verse 15. How must we carry out these orders from the Most High God? How does he want us to teach the Word of God to wake up those dry bones? The book of Titus chapter 2 and verse 15. Uh -huh. These things speak and exhort. Speak and exhort. Read. And rebuke. And what? And rebuke. Read. With all authority. With what? With all authority. Brothers, do not go up there second guessing.
guess in yourself. Be confident. Be strong in the word of the Lord. Read. Let no man despise thee. And let no man despise thee. I'm going to show you why. Because at the end of the day, when you up there teaching, are you by yourself, brothers? No. No. Not only do you got all your brothers around you, but you got an innumerable, innumerable amount of angels right there with you as well. Let's go to 2 Kings and 6. 2 Kings 6, start at verse 14. Because I see that. I don't see that a few places. Brothers shaking. Don't be, don't be shaking. The book of 2 Kings, chapter 6 and verse 14. Uh-huh. Therefore, sent he thither horses uh -huh. and chariots uh -huh. and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city so, about. They came into the city, uh, our enemies. Read. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and hosts compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. So all our enemies filled the whole outer realm of the city. He could see all these people. Read. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? So he's saying, how are we going to handle this? And he answered, Fear not, uh -huh. for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Read. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Do what? Open his eyes. Read. That he may see. Open his eyes that he may see. Read. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. So we always have backup. Don't worry. That's why we don't worry about numbers. You read all throughout the Maccabees. All right, we were always outnumbered. Even in the Old Testament, same thing. All right, don't have fear when you're going up to teach, brothers. Uh, I, I want to bring one of these chapters. I'm sorry, not to this. Second Samuel chapter ten, verse twelve. Just piggybacking exactly what officers uh, just brought out. The book of Second Samuel chapter ten and verse twelve. Be of good courage. So David was well. I'm sorry, uh, Joab was exhorting his men at this time because they were coming up against the Assyrians. And then, I can't remember the exact history, but uh, they had the, Assyrian, the Syrians and uh, Ammon coming up against them. And they were outnumbered. So he said, what? Read it again. Be of good courage and let us play the men for our people. When it says let us play the men, meaning be men. Be men. Conduct yourself like men. Act like men. Have a face of a man. Having your face, like it says in... Um, what is that, Ezekiel 2, Ezekiel 3, about your, your face stronger than their face? Yep, that's Your head stronger than their forehead? Yep. We have to be out there and be men and be serious. Come on. And let us play the men for our people. Because we're doing it for our nation. You're not doing it for just for yourself or nothing like that. You're doing it for the nation. Come on. And for the cities of our God. Uh-huh. And the Lord do that which seemeth him good. <laughs> All right. So from there, go to... um. Isaiah 50 and verse 4. Isaiah 50 and 4. The book of Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 4. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. To who? To him that is weary. Read. He wakeneth morning by morning. Uh -huh. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. Read. The Lord God hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. Uh -huh. Keep reading. I gave my back to the smiters, and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from spitting, mm -hmm. from shame and spitting. Read. For the Lord God will help me. For what? For the Lord God will help me. Read. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore what? Shall I not be confounded? Therefore shall I not be confounded, brothers. As long as you roll in the spirit of the Lord, it's impossible. It is impossible for you to be confounded. Go to Sirach 24 and 23. It says, therefore shall I not be confounded. That's why you got to teach with that confidence, that swagger. The book of Sirach, chapter 24 and verse 23. All these things are the book of the covenant. 22, I'm sorry. 22. Verse 22. He that obeyeth me uh -huh. shall never be confounded. Read that again. He that obeyeth me shall never be confounded. Shall never be confounded. Read. And they that work by me shall not do amiss. Luke 21 and 15. Last scripture. 
So brothers, we gotta teach with confidence and swagger, understanding that the most high God is on our side. And before you get your last one, officer, get uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 19. Because I know a lot of y'all on your way up here, y'all was studying, and you know, you already got it kind of mapped out what you're gonna go through. Your first 10 minutes, you're gonna go over color scriptures. <laughs> Next 10 minutes, you're going over the Sabbath. 30 minutes in, you're going over, you know, whatever else. I'm telling you right now, every the script you got right now, it ain't, it ain't going like that. I'm telling you right now, it ain't going like that. Matthew chapter 10, verse 19. The book of Matthew chapter 10 and verse 19. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. So don't get so caught up in your script or what you're going to speak, you know, what you're going to say, exactly how you're going to say it. And I'm going to bring this scripture out, then I'll bring this one out. You know, because it may not go like that. You may have somebody, you got color scriptures on the mind, but then somebody come up dealing with homosexuality. So you're going to go over Song of Solomon 1 and 5 and you got a, a homosexual right in front of you? No. So what the officer just brought out about staying in the spirit, really being mindful of what's in front of you and really being spiritual and understanding that, you know, this is the Lord's, you know, everything is of the Lord. You understand that? Come on. For it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. Because it'll be given you in that same hour. So the armor bearer is going to be strong. He's going to make sure he give you the scriptures that you need. Your reader's going to be your right hand man. Make sure, okay, homosexual coming up. Let me make sure I got something in the arsenal for that. Okay, somebody dealing with Egyptology, let me make sure I got some in the arsenal for that. That's why you got the man next to you to make sure that you stay in the spirit. And the officers, you know, will be there as well. So you don't got to worry about, I know that's where a lot of the, the nervousness can come from where you're like, oh shoot, he just brought up something about Egyptology. Okay, uh, 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 well, don't worry about that. We got you. All right? So y'all don't got to be nervous or nothing like that. The Lord will give it to you in that very hour. I'll pray. I got a precept I want to bring out. Go to um, Matthew 7 and 28 real quick. The book of Matthew chapter 7 and verse 28. Uh -huh. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority. All right, so our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, when he rode on the earth, when he taught, he taught with authority. Go to 1 Peter 1 and 10. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 10. So be mindful. We are the prophets of the Lord sent back on the earth to redeem his people. All right? Understand that first and foremost. All right? Read that. The book of 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 10. Uh-huh. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Read. Searching what? Or what manner of the time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, the Spirit of who? The Spirit of Christ, which was in them. So we must understand what? When we go out to the streets, what spirit is in us when we prophesy to these people? Christ. The Spirit of Christ. So we must do what? We must teach with authority in that passion. Psalm 70 and 2. All right, because the officer brought out us being confounded. All right, let's find out what happens when we teach with the spirit of Christ. Psalm chapter 70, verse 2. The book of Psalm chapter 70 and verse 2. Uh-huh. Let them be ashamed and confound and confounded. Read that again. Let them be ashamed and confounded. So the scripture says when the gainsayers come against us, when we teach in the word of God in the spirit of Christ, the scripture says let the contrary, let them be ashamed and confounded. Read. That seek after my soul. Read. Let them be turned backward and put to confusion the desire of my hurt. All right? That's why we have to go out there and speak boldly. We have to speak God's words boldly. All right? All right. Luke 21 and 15. Luke 21 and 15. The book of Luke, chapter 21 and verse 15. Uh-huh. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. So understand, the Most High God is going to deal with you as long as you have that confidence and belief that the Most High is dealing with you. He, he, he said he'll give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. There's nothing they can say or do to, to refute the Word of God. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. All right.
Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.